Welcome back to Mahi, the Pahi 42. Although she doesn't look like it now, she is a very well proven ocean going design. Certainly doesn't look like it right now. <laughs> Here are some examples of nicely done ones. And that's what I hope to get this one looking like over the next couple of years. It's certainly not gonna be two years until I actually go sailing, you know? That's still my aim to get the boat sailing this year. Previously, you'll have seen me draining thousands of litres of water, servicing and doing a bit of a rebuild with the engines with my dad. We've been for a little motor, but the next step and what's gonna be happening over the next two weeks is I'm gonna be moving this finally to a boatyard. This boat has been sitting in the water at anchor for 10 years and it's finally time almost to move it. And the next step is gonna be a treacherous 20 to 30 mile trip through some very busy locks and some busy shipping lanes as well. There's a couple of options in terms of boat yards, whether I'll be going to the center of Amsterdam or to Vase, which you'll see in this week's episode. This video is all about preparing for that trip. One seemingly small step, but actually a huge step to get in this boat sailing this year. So, a successful motor in last week's episode and I'm um, just anchored now freely. It feels amazing to be free. I feel like I'm cruising again, <laughs> having to worry about the anchor and all that. Just having a proper good clean up and an organize before I do some more motoring around because the place has become a bit of a mess, kind of scrambling to get the boat moving. So yeah, I'm putting all the tools away. This hull is gonna be my shed hull uh, for tool storage. It also helps balance out the other hull as well. A subscriber, Sander, came. He came a couple of weeks ago and dropped off some of his dad's old power tools. And he's come again with more stuff, including a router, a planer, a circular sander. So good. Like, thank you so much, Sander. Coming with all these tools. A lot of these tools as well, apparently, some of them are 20, 30 years old, but they look in such good condition. Sander from Sander. Thank you, Sander. Sander, you're the man. All right, so today I'm off to go and look at a boatyard with a fellow YouTuber, Cyril. He's been super helpful. He's been calling, he called up a few marinas actually on my behalf. So there's one that looks like they've got the space. Um, we would need a third party to come in with a crane, but uh, we've already contacted a crane company. So this boatyard's in a place called Wisp or we Vasp. Yeah, a little, a little village just outside Amsterdam. So let's check it out. I'm here with Cyril, who's been hey. helping me. <laughs> Been helping me find a yard and we're gonna go visit one today. But yeah, uh, Cyril, you also have a YouTube channel as well. Yeah, just started. Yeah. I'm super excited. Yeah. <laughs> so tell, tell us a little bit about your boat and like what, you know, how you got it, what yeah, you've done man. with it. It's actually been a, a nice uh, story so far. <laughs> uh, I had a small boat, 22 feet, and it was uh, fully prepared to be ready for the season. And I was like, yeah, I want actually a bigger boat with a bigger cabin, and a nice interior. So uh, then I went to the marketplace of uh, Holland, like the Dutch eBay. Yeah. And <laughs> it was really nice because uh, I sent some messages to people who uh, have a bigger boat, but with problems. And then uh, one of the guys was like, uh, hey, I would actually trade that in for a boat that sails. And you get a Duvour 31 with a broken diesel engine, Volvo Penta without a mast, it's in Amsterdam North somewhere. And he wasn't just gonna get it together. And it was greener and greener, four yeah. years of dirt. So then we did the swap and I thought, let's start the YouTube channel because I love to share knowledge. And yeah. I'm new to the whole sailing scene. So yeah. everything is, uh, is exciting and it's new and I can sail a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but I definitely need some, uh, uh, practice. The owner's not here, so we, we do need to speak to him again, I think. This is the crane, looks big enough. And there's only really this area to lift the boat out, but I think it's, it's a big enough space. But then whether the rest of this boatyard has much space for my size boat. Uh, but yeah, we'll speak to the owner 
on Monday, give him a call and see. But yeah, it's good to see the place and visualize potentially being here. And also, if we need to get an external crane company to come, then we can brief them on the area and get a good idea of the place. So we were just driving through Vesp, really nice, quaint little town. So, uh, is it a town you're familiar with? Like you, yeah. you grew up around here and around. stuff. Yeah, and your pronunciation was good. Vesp. Yeah, yeah. very good. This uh, one is harder. <laughs> yeah, Moiden. Mauden. 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 <laughs> to get to that town of Vesp, uh, you need to come through a lock. So we're going to go check out the lock. That's in a town called Moiden. Mauden. 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 <laughs> Yeah, we'll check out the town, check out the surroundings. Check out the food. Check out the food, yeah. I'm gonna get some food. I'm definitely getting a pint of beer. I don't know about you. <laughs> Same. Yeah. <laughs> I would eventually have to pass through, I think this middle, this middle one. So it looks quite tight. The width of my boat is eight, uh, 6.8 .8 meters. Looks very tight. So a huge thanks to Cyril for helping me find a boat yard. I uh, really appreciate his help. Check out his channel, it's called Sailing Silver Wind and he's tackled quite a few projects including re-rigging his whole boat with very little experience so if there's people that want to see that sort of content subscribe to his channel and yeah and i also just got an email back from another boatyard who said they can lift me the weekend after next so i'm so happy today so so happy We're, the boatyard that we visited today that was also so nice situated in such a nice place so we're going to call up those guys but whatever happens now at least in two or three weeks i'm actually going to be in a boatyard so yeah amazing stuff and also in the last video you saw me doing a little circle around this bay i mentioned briefly that one of the engines cut out and that's why i just dropped the anchor even though i was going to drop the anchor anyway but i've seen the clear and obvious reason why that engine cut out come come and have a look there's a rope and that goes down into the propeller was miserable weather all day, was sat watching Netflix, and then I got a visit from Freig down here. And, and, and what, what's her name? My friend, girlfriend, Noemi. Noemi. So yeah, I got a visit from Freig and Noemi, and he's gonna take me now to his very special 30 meter? Thir yeah. 30 meter clipper. 30 meter clipper. So which one is it? There. This the big one, one over there. <laughs> the one we're heading to. Nice place, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks. This is so good. <laughs> well, this is the ship I sail on. <laughs> and you, you sailed here today from what? From Enkhuizen towards here. Nice. With 19 passengers aboard, we had a lot of fun. It was Amazing. quite quite good wind and uh, went pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> so so how does it work then? So you you basically you live you live aboard full time. Yes. You you sail full time and you have passengers on board for like sailing experiences. Yes. Between April and October, we sail around the Isselmere until the Wada Islands and go around and make tours. 
nice. day trips, week trips, weekends, anything's possible. Amazing. Yep. So yeah, uh, check check the link in the description and also yeah the name uh, Meridian. Yeah, <laughs> and you can find out how to how to sail on this boat. So you steer from here. Yeah, there's the steering wheel. Oops. And if I don't see enough, I stand up here so it can look further <laughs> up front. <laughs> Longer. Oh, nice. Smaller. You sure you don't you don't need this? Not at all. <laughs> Please take it away from me. <laughs> Look down here. There's not even enough space to stand down here. This bed is full of ropes. That bed is full of wood. <laughs> and here it's full of drinks from the last guest and under here I need to be in this crate. Yeah. Joy joy. <laughs> Please take it away so I've got more space to organize. Take it. Take cool. it. Please. <laughs> just upgrade it. Get it bigger and it won't break. <laughs> Craig just asked me, do I have a use for this? <laughs> Look at the size. Well, That's it's too beautiful. small for me. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your first day? Yes. And then you compare it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That was such a nice surprise from No Amy and Freik. Uh, such great guys, had such a nice evening. We went and we picked up uh, some old rope. This is going to be really good mooring rope, I think, which I need to set up. And yeah, uh, some bolts. Oh, this is a stainless steel one. This fits perfectly for my aft beam, so I'm going to put that in there, drill through it. I'm going to try and drill through it anyway, but we'll see. But also, a great book which No Amy gave to me Under Zale, like a comic strip book all about sailing it's basically a story about these two kids who uh, what really desperately want to go sailing and it's got basically everything you need to know about sailing it's such a great book but the really good thing is it's in Dutch like completely so I can practice a little bit of Dutch I've been really slow on the uptake of Dutch because uh, everyone speaks perfect English here so it's really difficult to practice or yeah, it feels a bit embarrassing <laughs> speaking terrible Dutch. Uh, when we were in uh, Spain, France and Italy, we absolutely needed to pick up the language to get by. But here, it's so international. Everyone's really, really well educated in English. But the Dutch people, people like Noemi, Freik, Thomas, Olaf, Cyril, the people that I've met here has just been amazing. And the help and... Yeah, there's so, so many other people as well. Thijs, Dan, Marlene. And yeah, I feel really bad if I've... Sander, uh, so many people. So, you guys are amazing. Thanks for all your generosity. And also, another thing, I came to my dinghy yesterday and it was full of rope. So, someone came to deliver some rope into my dinghy. So, I wonder if that was uh, Harid. Was that you? If it is, thank you so much. That was a lot of talking. Hope you don't mind. This episode is literally just getting prepared to move to the boatyard. Two options now. Uh, one's half confirmed, one I don't need a reservation for. Boatyard is on the cards. It has to be next week or the week after, we'll see. Yeah, lots of stuff to do. Things like putting the name on the boat. Mahi, I need to stop calling her the boat. She's Mahi. So the incredibly generous rope fairies also gave me two fenders as well, so. That's a, that's a result. I think I have three fenders now. I need a few more. I'm not expecting people to give them to me, but I'm gonna have to get some before I leave. The problem with fenders is they're just massively overpriced when you buy them new. So I need to find... Oh, in fact, Freight gave me the contact of someone who sells used stuff. Okay, so here we have a seven euro or maybe 12 euro cheap drill bit set from Action, the Netherlands' 
cheap store. It says here we've got steel, brick and wood or metal. So which ones are the metal ones? I'm going to give this drill bit uh, two minutes before it snaps. Yeah, I think cheap drill bits are no good really. Hmm. All right, let's see if we can get the other one off. Eh? Ah, okay, okay, I get it. So these bolts have the hole through, but also the nut has a hole through it also. Cheap drill bits versus mild steel nut. I think it's mild steel. All good now, I've got two identical setups. Oh no, that pin's not very good. Pin's too small. So last week someone gave me some really, really, really good advice. I was super happy about it uh, in the comments section and it was basically to make a extension pull cord for the engines so that I can start the engines from on deck as opposed to having to go down to start them, which is just such great thinking. And so obviously I'm going to do that. Got some rope and some cork to make little handles and some little cleats which I can just tie it off at, at, at the deck. A lot of people watch this and probably think that, you know, I'm very inexperienced and I'm bodging a lot of stuff and, and, and stuff like that. But I really, really appreciate it when people, rather than just criticise, just, you know, give good advice because obviously it's still relatively inexperienced with boats. So I'm trying to pick up as much knowledge as possible. So. For you guys who've been there and done it, stuff like this, advice, let me know. I really appreciate it. More ergonomic shape. Boom. Using cork, because if the cord falls down then it should float. Hopefully no more lines in the propeller. <laughs> Tiny bowling. I think we go for a tiny bowling. Little tiny bowling. all right it's shower day <laughs> so how do i take a shower well i come to a center parks or euro parks basically a campsite or i don't know they've got houses and stuff uh, because here is where olaf a friend of mine had his boat and i came to see him and the showers are just open so i just go and take a shower it's, it's cold water but i don't mind a cold water shower but yeah if you've ever seen the film Parasite, a Korean film, great film, that's how I feel. <laughs> Oh, 
objective complete. Feeling good, feel like a new man. Right, so the objective today is gonna to be a bit of a buying day. I think I'm gonna to have to get a VHF. I and mean, rather than put a sticker on the boat for my name, I think I'm just gonna paint it. So I'll get all the stuff for that. Not a completely successful day. Uh, I didn't get a VHF, didn't get courtesy flags and all that. The uh, marine shop was closed, so I'll just go to another one over the next couple of days. But I do have, from the cheap DIY shop, some cheap, cheap stuff. <laughs> Cheap grill bits, but these ones are high speed steel. Absolutely loads in there. That was 15 euros. I tell you. A couple of little paint brushes. Also, carbon monoxide detector. That was also 15 pounds. Can't put a price on safety, can you? Two stroke oil. That was five euros. Should be all right. Probably not the best, but should be all right. And some cheap duct tape. So what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm gonna draw first Mahi. I'm gonna put one on the starboard side and one on the aft side. I'm gonna draw it with, draw it with a pencil. But grey paint. So silly. Should have known it's got a grey lid. Heading to a boatyard so I don't want to turn up a complete bedraggled mess. And the uh, the windows, the the duct tape around the windows is falling off, it looks rubbish, there's plants growing in the gunnels and yeah, it's a bit rough, so I'm going to take off all the tape, redo the tape, clean up a little bit. Well, it looks the same, if not a little bit worse, because it's black and it stands out. Anyway, and obviously there's also the ropes which got stuck in the propeller. Ten years in the water. That's what ten years looks like. So yeah, one of the slower weeks when it comes to physical progress. Fingers crossed next week and next week's video is, is the video of me moving this boat. Still not 100% confirmed but I know for a fact that there is a boatyard that is willing to lift me at the end of the month anyway so that is super good news. I'm super happy about that. A huge thanks to Cyril and Freik and Noemi. Check out Cyril's channel again like uh, in, in terms of a starting point you know for getting a boat, getting a cruising boat, uh, Cyril's going to be putting out some good videos. So as a little thank you as well, if you can go like and subscribe to his channel, that would be really nice, really nice. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you watching. I know there's a lot of adverts on YouTube and, you know, watching my videos through all the adverts. Really appreciate that. And yeah, just watching, engaging, your comments and your advice. All really, really helpful for me. Thanks as well to everyone, the incredibly generous people who went to my coffee, PayPal, subscribed as a monthly patron. It's really helping me out a lot. So thank you so, so much. Yeah, I wish I could do more in return <laughs> for it. Uh, but uh, yeah, you guys, just thank you so, so much. Next week, fingers crossed, epic adventure. <laughs> I'm terrified. I'm shitting my pants.